Hai perdonato Peter dopo quell'incidente del Tour 2017? Quella del 2023 doveva essere la stagione che avrebbe messo la parola fine alla straordinaria carriera di Mark Cavendish, probabilmente il miglior velocista di tutti i tempi. L'ultima occasione per ottenere la 35esima vittoria di tappa al Tour de France e diventare il recordman assoluto davanti a Eddie Merckx. Ha sfiorato il successo nella settima tappa, ma neanche 24 ore dopo è caduto fratturandosi la clavicola. Questo episodio l'ha portato alla decisione di fare un'altra stagione, sempre con il team Astana. Abbiamo avuto il piacere di intervistarlo a Lua e Tour e tra le tante cose di cui abbiamo parlato c'è anche l'episodio del Tour 2017, la terribile caduta allo sprint provocata da un contatto con Peter Sagan che scatenò tantissime polemiche e che si chiuse con la squalifica dello slovacco. Come ti senti dopo 20 anni di ciclismo professionistico? I feel good, thank you. I feel tired. But I think that might just be the age. I don't know whether that's the cycling or just the age, you know. Um, and five kids. <laughs> But it's okay. I think uh, so I still love it. I'm still lucky to, to get to ride my bike as my job, you know. So. Quanto è cambiato il ciclismo dalla tua prima gara nel 2006 a oggi? You cannot imagine how much cycling's changed since I started. I think there's been maybe three, four iterations of cycling, you know. Um, I think you remember also, like, it was more closed. I think the whole world's changed with the information and things that are available, you know. Uh, you raced and the race was reported on. Now it's everything you do is, is like this. The cycling, because of that cycling, was, it was a closer community, professional cycling. Everyone knew each other. We all knew we had the same kind of job and we were all in it together. Um, then obviously the stakes became higher. Um, there's more money involved and that changes everything in life, doesn't it? But uh, in terms of the sporting side, yeah, I think those teams came along, like Sky came along and instead of it being slow and then fast, there was two speeds instead of slow, yeah. but, like, There was one constant tempo and it changed the demographic of riders that was able to ride. You know, you had to be able to sustain a high tempo the whole day. And then, uh, yeah, science came in and data was able to be analyzed and, and riders were no longer kind of picked on if they could win races or not. It was on how strong they were, you know, and it changed a bit then again because There's only a couple of riders could win races. And now everybody is strong, you know? I know, I know. So, <laughs> like, now there's rider, the riders who win are also, it's not just you have to be able to race, there's guys who are strong and can race. So it's kind of gone full circle. It's just that the level's gone high because of that now. So uh, it's been massive. I've, I'm lucky that I've been able to kind of adapt to that and see it, um, but uh, this world's apart from when I started, that's for sure. Sei sicuro che sarà il tuo ultimo anno di gare? <sighs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's my last year. I have to stop at some point. Um, I was pretty sure last year that was my last year. Obviously things change, you don't know what happens in life. Um, but you definitely have to put a definitive, definitive time frame on that. You know, and uh, yeah, I can't say for certain anything, but I can be pretty sure that um, the racing is fine. I love racing. I carry on racing forever, you know. It's that winter, putting the winter in. I like riding my bike, but you can't just go is out with your friends. Problem, yeah. Nice. yeah, I'm away from home. You can't go out with your friends and ride. You train a lot on your own now. And my family's growing up. You know, uh, I need to start seeing the kids in their sports day. I need to see the players at school. I need to give my wife a hand at home, you know. Um, you know, I've got to kind of live a real life at some point, so. Ti vedremo al prossimo Giro d'Italia? I won't be at the Giro this year. Um, obviously have 
a big goal with the Tour de France. It's a very, very difficult Tour de France. And as we know, the Giro d'Italia is always difficult. Um, I think I need as much energy as I can. Um, that's first and foremost. But also, I've had, I had some of the best days of my career at the Giro. And to be able to finish my Giro career with a stage win in front of the Colosseum in Rome, like it's, it's the perfect finish. Uh, I was like, I'm incredibly proud that I was able to win, a, win a, at least one stage of the Giro in every Giro that I did, you know? And uh, it's kind of a nice run to finish on like that. Come è stato vincere a Roma lo scorso anno? It was a, uh, it was a hard Giro. Giro is always hard. Um, a lot of the Pelon got sick at some point and uh, that was one of them and uh, that's really suffered through. I had an incredible group of guys around me and um, you know Joe Dombrowski was good but especially Gianni Moscon like he was a soldier for me through the whole Giro. He got me through that and uh, we rode like a beautiful Giro. We deserved something as a team from that you know so we had to get through and winning Rome was, was special. But the way also we did it and also with friends, obviously everybody knows the story with Geraint Thomas. Um, it made it such a beautiful day in my career, you know? And uh, I love Rome. I go to Rome with my family and uh, for me it's the most beautiful city on earth. There's a history there. I'm crazy about Roman history and uh, that photo, I have that photo. I don't have much in, at home in terms of my cycling, but I have a photo of that win and uh, it's pretty special. So. Hai qualche rimpianto, non so, una corsa che avresti voluto vincere, ma non sei mai riuscito a portare a casa? Um, I think at some point everybody has regrets, but uh, you can't dwell on regrets. You can only learn from mistakes you did or learn from things you, you didn't do. You can't turn back time, can we? Um, I think to specifically point to things, not really, because if I don't win, somebody else won, and if somebody else won, they deserve to win, you know, so that, that's sport, that's siphon. Um, but there's definitely things I would have done differently in my career. I think I was too trusting with people. I think aside from races, um, I was tr too trusting with, with, with people in my career, and uh, that can cause you some detriment in your life, you know? And uh, so there's definitely things I would change, but you can't go back. You're young, you live, you learn, and you can only do what you can in the future and teach your kids not to do the same thing as well, so. Chi è stato il tuo miglior ultimo uomo? Um, I've had some of the best leader, man. Not just in my career, but in the history of cycling. And I'm so lucky for that. And I'm so lucky that they haven't just been teammates, they've been friends. And each one is different. To say a best is, it's not fair, it's not right. Um, they've all had qualities that set them apart from anything else. And two of them work together with me now, you know, with Michael Morkov and uh, Mark Renshaw. They're both in the team, okay, Mark's not riding. But what he brings to the team helps not just me, not just Michael, but helps the whole team, you know, and uh, and yeah, I don't know who's the best or why, but I'm very lucky to work with some of the people I have, that's for sure. Qual è stato l'avversario più difficile che hai incontrato? Marcel Kitt, without doubt, was the most difficult rider I've ever had. Like, he, it took me at least two years to be able to even beat him. He's just so strong, so strong. Like, you can't figure out a way to beat him. Like I could always try and figure out what other sprinters did and what I had to do to be able to do it, how they usually move and that. With him, it, it took a long time, you know? Um, and, uh, yeah, he won some incredible races and he's a man mountain, he's a super nice guy. We have a really good relationship. Um, 
Poi usa hard one a be. Qual è il miglior consiglio che ti hanno dato? Mm. Good question. I'm trying to think of something that's not cliched, you know? Oh, yeah. Bradley Wiggins taught me how to pursuit. Taught me how to do a pursuit. And uh, without that, I'd have never won an Olympic medal. Like, I kept hitting the same times before the Rio Olympics. And I didn't do that much track anymore. I didn't at that point, you know, but the individual pursuit was part of the Omnium. And Elia Viviani won. And I was hitting the same kind of times for a year. And it was just in a training session. And Bradley was sat down after, after an effort. And Bradley's like, try this. I'm not going to tell you what it is, because it was one of his secrets. He said, try this. And I went up straight away and just smashed the lap times I was doing. And uh, I think in the pursuit event, I got second and those points got me a medal at the Olympic Games. And uh, I think Brad had learned that from Chris Boardman. And uh, it, was, it was super vital, super, super vital. I'm so happy he did that, you know. Dal 2017 al 2020 hai affrontato stagioni molto difficili. Avresti mai immaginato di tornare nel 2021 ad altissimi livelli? Um, in all honesty, yes, I knew I could still ride the tour and ride at a good level. I just, the hardest thing was not doing it, it was getting the opportunity to do it, you know. Um, the hard years in my life, look, I don't profess to have the hardest years of my life because there's so many people have harder times than I've ever had, you know. Um, But uh, the hardest points, the biggest thing I learned was you can only control what you can do, you know? And decisions or things that other people do, they might have an influence on what you can do, but uh, you can't change that. And if you spend time getting upset and worrying about that, that you can't continue what you can do. So just concentrate on what you do. And uh, if you do it enough, things will work out, you know? Um, and that's all I could do was concentrate on what I could do, train as hard as I could, rally a team around me, and, uh, and put myself in the best position to do that. And uh, through circumstances they would go the tour and uh, I knew then with my form and the absolutely phenomenal group of boys that I had there with me that we'd be successful. Vuoi vedere cosa disse Sagan nel gennaio 2021? Yeah, yeah, go on. Cosa pensi di Cavendish e come vedi il suo ritorno alla De Koenig? È molto bene. Sto guardando che Marco è una persona che la devi, come si dice in italiano, ammirare. Ammirare? Sì, ci sta. Per quello che ha fatto, per i risultati per, che ha ottenuto. No, è quello che fa. Ah, ok, ok. Non solo per i risultati, ma per com'è, come Co essere umano. Quello che fa. Quello che fa, ok. Perché io in mia posizione non riesco a trovare energia per continuare. Invece lui è sempre okay. là che vuole combattere con mondo. Ok, ho capito, okay, adesso ho capito. Okay. È quello che okay. è da ammirare su di lui. Ha ancora voglia di lottare e quindi di, di chiudere poi anche in bellezza la carriera. Quindi sì. tutto rispetto, massimo rispetto per Carlo. No, massimo rispetto e anche vedrai che vince qualcosa. Vedremo. Wow. I, you know, we've had, we had tough times together, but we're actually super close now um, that's incredible that's a champion talking do you know is that's that's warmed me so much that's warmed my heart man oh I, like, i never knew that i never knew you did that interview i've never seen it um oh special blessing i'm gonna message him now tell him that's that's super nice i'm 
I'm so happy, so happy that I proved him right, do you know? Like, yeah, he's a... Uh, Um, that's, that's super nice. I don't know what to say on speech, it's like, bless him. Hai perdonato Peter dopo quell'incidente del tour 2017? Yeah, of course. Like, look. We move on, we grow up, you know? And, uh, that's, to forgive is, it, 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 there was always circumstances in there, you know? Um, but we have a super good relationship. Like, and that's really nice, you know, like, he was so good for this sport, so good for this sport, and uh, I love this sport, I'm more than a bike rider, I'm a fan of it, my kids are a fan of it, and, uh, and what he brought to the sport, I can only be grateful for that, and uh, yeah, same things like that, how he is as a person, like, Right, he's a legend. That's super nice. Ciao, grazie, Mario. Prego. Eh, non l'hai vista questa intervista? Mai, eh? mai, mai. Eh, perché poi in italiano così... Eh. Poi tu ho fatto tanto, tu italiano capisci bene, non hai...